Coming up on today's Code Bet Daily, it is our Chockers Monday show. We're talking about the Brownlow now that the favourite is out. We've got some Women's World Cup. I've even got a little bit of NFL preseason gear. Alex, after a trip to Tassie, what are you looking at? Having a look at a team to miss the top eight as well as a goal scorer in the Women's World Cup tonight. Nice one, Stats Guy. The Aussies to go well tonight in the round of 16 and a Crystal Palace top scorer. Awesome. Sounds pretty good. We're talking player props, game picks, best bets. There's a sneaky rate my multi in there as well. Better check it all out. It's CodeBet Daily. It's really good. Welcome to CodeBet Daily. It is Monday. Oh, jeez. That's right. And the USA's dream is over. Anyway, <laughs> this is Evan, this is episode 168 of this here program. It is called CodeBet Daily, and I am the editor of CodeBet. My name is James Clements. It's a good website, actually. Go check it out, cobet.com.au. You can break down all the odds and everything you need for all the AFL, NRL, Women's World Cup gear. Great article by the Stats Guy up today about the Matildas game tonight. England-Nigeria game. He's all over it. Either way, I am joined, as always, by the Pontiffs. That's right. The Pontiffs of punting. Nailed it. Uh, We've got the Stats Guy over there, fresh off a dominating performance on the weekend at Brunswick Street Oval following... (laughs) best on ground performance definitely not in the financial year party as well <laughs> i <laughs> definitely uh, wasn't best on ground on either of those things uh and we lost by a point so. fireball shots like it was business this is this is actually like a performance enhancing drug because uh, <laughs> it comes off his left boot like a fireball you know what i'm saying so, <laughs> definitely anyway. not yeah and we've got alex Dudley as well there fresh off just absolutely gorging himself on oysters and apparently pastry, yeah. uh, Tasmania, the little island. Alex, what's going on? Uh, happy to be back. I am absolutely more pastry than man right now. I did have the best almond croissant of my life Ooh. at the uh, Pigeonhole Bakers in Hobart. Absolutely Ooh. phenomenal. But yes, awesome weekend of footy. America right. gets knocked out of the World Cup in the funniest way possible. The Swans beat the Giants and Arsenal win a trophy. How good is life? Nice one. And uh, The Blues in fifth. Loving and it. North Melbourne finding a way to lose once again. I tell you what, though, I saw that many <laughs> Demons the fans half. yesterday morning, uh, like as I was getting ready to leave Hobart, I reckon there was an influx of people. It's like, hey, there's Mountain. Oh, we can't ski here, so we just may as well go to the footy. <laughs> Classic Melbourne supporters. Yeah. All right, that's it. It is CoBed Daily. It says it on the tin. It's code to spending. It's daily. Now we're talking player props, game picks, and best bets. Uh, I'm going to chuck in a quick rate my multi for the World Cup action across the next couple of days as well. And what else am I going to look at? Well, Brownlow. Uh, oh, I'll be yeah. writing a piece about this today, I think. I'm going to uh, make uh, Alex do a Coleman update. I'm going to write a Brownlow piece about Nick Dacos's injury. And we actually, I was already on this last week, so I feel like I'm taking a little bit of a victory lap. But, I mean, we don't cheer for injuries, of course. So, no. but the no, I mean, a lot of old men on Twitter are, ah, sucked in Nick Dacos, ah, come on, get a life, losers. <laughs> Never forget that people are idiots. Yes. And uh, but the thing is, the favourites cook. So what does that mean? Now, uh, I'm also going to obviously mention uh, the Women's World Cup. That's all my game picks. And an NFL best bet at one team that everybody – it's the hype train team. And I just want to break it down a little bit. But I still kind of uh, agree with a little bit of the hype. Uh, what about you, Stats Guy? Some FIFA Women's World Cup, of course. The Aussies are back tonight. And an EPL future. Looking at a goal scorer once again. Nice one, Alex. I like our stats guys jumping in before our big EPL show tomorrow that we're doing. Uh, but I'm looking at the Women's World Cup and the AFL with the team to miss the top eight. Ooh. Nice one. St Kilda. Uh, no, I can't do that. I, I reckon I've run with that 16 weeks this year. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to be wrong. <laughs> like You basically alternate between Western Bulldogs and St Kilda and they're both going to make the eight. It's going to be hilarious. I don't know about eight still. You never know. Don't know. Yeah. Right, let's get into it. Player props. Player props. 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 <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob. Props. That felt really quick today. <laughs> props, 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 props. All right, the brown low. Let's break down this brown low betting market now, gentlemen. Uh, obviously, Nick Dacos has a fractured, uh, fracture in his knee. Uh, not not ideal. No. And they're like, oh, he'd be, you know, prelim. He'll be back. It's like, mm. Where, Doesn't make it. Like, make it. A, a six-week uh, diagnosis uh, doesn't exactly mean he'll be back on the dot in six weeks. You never know with true, this sort of thing. True, true. Uh, uh, but he was obviously the rampaging favourite. It was $1.75, I think, last week when we talked about this. Uh, he is now out to $6. Has he banked enough to win it? Gentlemen, what do you say? No. No. If the Bont and Pachaka weren't in amazing form, then, yeah, maybe, but no. 
Definitely not. Three rounds to go. So you just have the feeling that he's not nine points clear, like, or at least like that clear. I don't think he's six clear. Yeah, I think he's I about don't... four or five. I was looking at it the other day, yeah. Well, he definitely doesn't get a vote on the weekend and Bont absolutely got three on Friday night. So yeah, yeah. There, there's a, I, technically speaking, a, probably a couple of vote turnaround straight away aside from Bont's three. Yep. Yep. So that's kind of the point that I made the other day, right? So Petrarca and Bont are the next favourites. Uh, I think I had Petrarca last week at 550. Bont was six. And oh, they have the now short- run in two. Uh, they have now shortened, I believe, Petrarca is 275 and Bont is $2.10 now as the uh, favourite, especially after basically, I think everybody saw his mark against the Tigers on Friday and went, yeah, he's winning the Brown though. That'll do. <laughs> Going backwards in the, uh, into the flight of the ball, getting absolutely creamed, but smashed it as well for the rest so of the game. So it wasn't having 30-something possessions and kicking three? No, oh, no. That was, that's <laughs> a, but they saw his mark went, that'll do, pig. That'll do. And uh, <laughs> off they went. So I feel like Bont is the uh, probably the lead up in it at the moment. But in terms of uh, run homes, as you mentioned, like Petrarca has got Carlton next week. It gets a little bit, uh, I don't know. The Bulldogs get a bit of a run here. Alex, do you want to take us through it? Yeah, uh, they've got Hawthorne this weekend. So, you know, Finn McGuinness might just go, that's cute, Bont. I'm going to do to you what I did to Nick Dacos and just shut him down completely. But he does have the West Coast, the West Coast Eagles the following week. He could have 47 and five and get, could he get all six votes? Probably not, but might deserve it. And then Geelong in the last round is tricky. And this is almost the. Patrick Cripps in the final game of the season against Collingwood last year. It's like, huh, I'm going to win this for my team, ideally, that the Western Bulldogs win because they may need to win that to stay in the in the finals. And that could get him, you know, probably another three votes against a, a Geelong team who's good but not good at the same time. Yeah, it does feel like, so with this, that little run, right? So, as you said, Hawthorne. He's uh, getting Finn McGuinness. Finn McGuinness well, is McGinnis just going to try. Isn't, I don't know if he's big enough. I know he's... It's easier yeah, to take Dacos is a bit can, smaller, but we'll see. Yeah. If you can stop Bont from having 30 and get it yeah. to 20, it's yeah. a great result. True, true. And it also sort of feels like the Hawthorne, uh, a sort of Hawthorne game like that, right? We saw Trelaw last week. If he has another massive game, then it's like they do have those two or three other dudes who can sort of maybe step up. Again, if he just like has like a little bit of a limit put on him, yeah. it can hurt you. But, I mean, against the Eagles, he could kick three goals and have 30 again. Yep. Uh, and then the Geelong thing, as mentioned, like it could be an actual – pre-elimination, elimination final, depending on how Geelong go as well. Uh, Petrarca, for the flip side, he plays Carlton, uh, Hawthorne, oh, f- Sydney. Oh, well, Finn McGuinness is just going to ruin everyone's Brownlow bracket by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So, my point is, bet on Zach Butters. Uh, <laughs> at 21 bucks, to be honest, I don't mind it. He was like, it was he's, amazing. He's got to be too far off the pace though, doesn't he? What? Port were basically two men, same it felt like on the weekend. Oh, right? he was, he was, he should be taking a vote. Yeah, yeah. But Zach Butters, I think he, Butters and Rosie are basically going 3 2 3 2 3 2 in any game the Port have actually been half decent in this season, apart from maybe the one, one or two where Houston stepped up. So, Butters, look, if he, if they can vaguely pull this together, Port, over the last three weeks, he's still got a bit of a sniff, if you ask me. Yeah. Because uh, I feel like there might be a little bit of a limit. As you said, the Finn McGuinness effect, who knows? Uh, but the Brownlow thing has completely opened up to a degree where you've got two favorites who have just leaped ahead of everybody else, leapt ahead of the uh, incumbent. And it's really, really made it wildly interesting. It's going to be awesome in the last three weeks. My pick is probably still Petrarca. I think there's like a couple of – the only problem being, I guess, you do have Maxi Gorn in like an absolute rip snorter amount of form. You got Viney in there as well, taking the odd vote away. But against Carlton, I feel like uh, we talked about this when Carlton and Melbourne played earlier in the season. He always, always demolishes Carlton. Yeah. Always just has like the most heartbreaking goal, 40. 40 odd meters out on the uh, left wing of the MCG. He's going to do it again. Just watch it. But I don't know. For $2.75, $2.10, it's pretty hard to split. What are you thinking, both of you? Alex? I'm just having a look now, just trying to figure out what my top 10 bets are going to be for later on the year. You think that Bont, Petrarca, and Dacos are absolutely there. But I did mention Toby Green last week uh, for GWS. But I saw you've got it written on the rundown here. And I just had a quick look at the stats. My favorite man, Errol. Whoa, Errol. He absolutely got three on Saturday night against GWS. He probably gets three against Essendon. Yep. Uh, and then just having a look at some of his stats, there was that game against Collingwood where he had nearly 40 touches. He probably gets two, possibly three there. Against Fremantle earlier in the year in a loss, he probably gets a couple. Against the Western Bulldogs a few weeks ago, it's a couple. There's every chance he's in the 
probably early to mid 20s at the moment. No chance of winning it. But geez, he's at, what is he, 100 to 1? So he should be about $5. To run top ten, he is an absolute certainty for most votes for Sydney too. That was the uh, the note I have in the, our run sheet right now is that he is going to top the count for Sydney. Oh, Mads. absolutely, yeah. No one else is going to come close to him at this point. Yeah, yeah. Chun- Chunley's injury and a bit of a drop off there hasn't helped him, but Errol's last month has just been. I'm the All Australian winger. I'm better than uh, the other Dacos, and I'm going to run top ten in the Brownlow and possibly win one in the future. Yeah, that's guy. Who's your pick then? I, I I know we it's the favorite, but got to be Bont. I think they got an easy run home, uh, and when he when they win, he's always getting three votes. Like he, I don't even even see against him the, the Swans, he would have got three votes for his so game too. If they get a few more wins, he's going to get those three votes. And I think yeah, now Dacos is out, he could win this pretty easy. We'll see though. Weirdly enough, that Hawthorne game is in Tassie, so weird stuff always happens True. in Tassie. Yeah, the Bulldogs it's in Tassie. Ugh. So uh, and then the Bulldogs. At least the weird thing is, like I feel like uh, Bont. When it's at Marvel, it's like Packer Up Boys yeah. where he's dominating. But they only have like that West Coast game against them because the other one's in Geelong at GMHBA. So it's two okay. basically away games and that home game against the Eagles and that's kind of it. They yep. can't miss the eight, can they? Uh, I don't know. They'll beat West Coast. That's tw- That has them 12. And then I suppose if they lose this weekend, that Geelong game is very tense. It's yeah, awesome. that's good. Uh, whereas Melbourne play their two games at the G and then they <clears> are up in Sydney to finish off. So Petrarca, look. Who knows what could happen, but either way. Pretty gnarly. We'll break it down more in the AFL show later this week. Uh, right. What about you, Alex, with your – no, Liam. Let's go, Liam, for your player prop. Sure. Uh, having a look at Australia, the Matildas taking on Denmark tonight in the round of 16, of course. I had a goal scorer. We were pretty good with the goal scorers. I think a few of us talked about Rod. She scored on the weekend. I talked about uh, Mia She's Zawa. leading, isn't she? Uh, she? Yeah, she probably is now, actually. And then Mia Zawa uh, for Japan also scored, who I was talking about as well. So we've been really good on the goal scorers. Having a look at uh, Mary Fowler, an absolute star for the Matildas, of course. She was amazing last game. I feel like she's a bit of a confidence-based player. When the team's up and about, she sort of plays well. She looked a bit... Bit uh, not off in the start of the tournament, but yeah, really back to her best last game. She has the ability to score with either foot. Always seems to be in that central position. Even if Sam Kerr does come back in the side, I think they could start both of them where they haven't in the past. But you got to keep Fowler out there with the form she's in, uh, and she's got great uh, crossing. Uh, passes from Rasso and Carpenter. I think that can set her up again. So $3.60, I think is a really good bet. Uh, and then I found a Ladbroke special as well. Rasso, who had two goals last game for the Aussies on that wing. She was absolutely awesome. You can get $2.50 for Rasso or Fowler to score tonight. So Ooh. I thought that was really good uh, with Ladbroke. So definitely one to yeah get on. That would be our two best goal scorers in this tournament. So nice have a look one. at that one, yeah. And then... Lovely. I believe both of you are now on this England and Nigeria game as well for your other player prop. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. You got to talk. If you're going to talk about England, you got to talk about Lauren James. She's been probably the best player in the tournament. I'm going to say she's got three goals and three assists in this tournament so far, which is absolutely awesome. Every time they go into attack, uh, Lauren James is just just there. She just can Jill Rood is right there going, "Hey, look at me." Yeah. Has she, has she got any assists? I don't, I don't know. Overall, overall player, I think I'm going uh, uh, Lauren James. Uh, Two dollars eighty for her to score. Yes, every time they attack, I think she scored with a header a couple of weeks ago. She scored with both feet in this tournament. She can do it all. So get on Lauren James as well for England. Yeah, I agree with stats guys. Going Lauren James to score any time. The way that England have built into the tournament, that first game, they were scrappy. Uh, then they won the second game well, and then they just went, <laughs> we're ready to go now in their third yeah. and final group stage game. And what was it 6-1 with James was absolutely everywhere. Uh, they figured out after the first game, like, hey, we actually might start what looks to be our best player. She's a gun, and probably yeah. one of the reasons why England are uh, you know, the favourite to win this tournament now. But, geez, that half of the bracket is really tricky because you've got England, France, and Australia all just in I there. Know. Oh, okay, and it sets it up for Stats Guys uh, Japan to make a run into this tournament because I reckon after Thank watching you. last night, they will make a mess of sweet in this weekend. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Mm. Really? Yeah. Japan are good. I'm telling you, I think I got them at 20 some dollars. Yeah, they're a good side. Good. All right, let's do some match picks, game picks. What's your best match or game pick? What is it? Well, I'm going to break down every single one of these uh, Women's World Cup games. We've got England halftime, full-time over Nigeria. As, yep. the, uh, as the esteemed other two have just broken down, I think England just a little bit too good. I think we see an early score and then a late one, and I think it's a two-zip sort of game. I just don't trust Nigeria enough to put one past really a pretty, hard, like a pretty good English defense so far this tournament. Yep. Uh Australia to qualify against Denmark. This is a tough one. I feel like this just screams. We're all sitting here on our couches, hearts in mouth. They're not going to penalties. Oh, they're not going to penalties. I'll be, be so scared. A- it'll, no, it'll be 3 a.m. because it doesn't start till like 9 o'clock. Yeah. One, zip, 
one zip in extra time. That's where I'll take that. I'll take that. And uh, then Tuesday, Colombia, and over two and a half goals against Jamaica. I feel like that's a bit of a 2-1 job for me. Jamaica haven't, well, they're also one of the teams that have not conceded a goal uh, so far this tournament. There's only three of them. Uh, So Colombia, though, have looked very, very good. So let's go Colombia over two and a half against Jamaica, and then France. (laughs) <laughs> you think that our former colony, Morocco, can beat us in? No, no. I don't. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> they lost 5-0 in the first game and got to the knockouts. That's it's unbelievable. wild. That's unbelievable. Uh, actually, now I'm trying to figure out if Morocco was a French colony. Probably not, actually. I don't know. It's a, uh, it is right next to Spain. So We've yeah. just cancelled Jim. That's great. <laughs> I don't know if I can be cancelled for getting my history wrong. Yeah. Uh, but either way. Culturally insensitive. This is, uh, I feel like France, look, Morocco, I was tempted to go even more for France, so France and over three and a half, but I think you get a half decent actual return, I think, on the France and over two and a half because, I mean, if it's – do you really trust Morocco to be scoring here? It's a bit of a weird nah. one. But this scores, uh, you know, you screams three zip to me. So uh, this is where the sneaky – Raid my multi (laughs) comes in. Nice. England halftime, full time over Nigeria. Australia to qualify against Denmark. Colombia at over two and a half over Jamaica and France and over two and a half over Morocco. Rate my multi, gentlemen. That is eighteen dollars and thirteen cents. Yeah, I'll give it an eight. I or maybe seven and a half. I'm not sure about the over two and a half in. Columbia, Jamaica, because Jamaica, they just sit back and hope for the best. So we'll see. Yeah. It was the trickiest one, but I felt like, I like it, a Jamaica at least score in that one too. Yeah. So yep. if you think yeah. they're going to score, then over. Fascinating, but I like that. All right, let's go. Match game picks, Alex. Just looking at the Tillies taking on Denmark tonight. I'm going Australia and over two and a half goals in regulation time at uh, $3.60 with Ladbrokes. Uh, this is the second time we've played Denmark in a World Cup. Last time we did, we thumped them. Five zip. Oh. That may have been, you know, 30 years ago, but hey, it still counts. <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> say. Uh, also, just the way that we absolutely demolished the Olympic champions and just ran through them 4-0 last week. Uh, the fact that they did it without Sam Kerr, they're up and about. She's expected to play at least some part tonight. You've got to expect that it's sort of like how we saw England the other day do it, like and Japan as well. Teams that are confident coming into these round of 16 games that are up and about are going to be very hard to beat. Like we sort of said it all the way through. Even from the first game of the tournament, America had been horrendous like for their amazing standard. They'd had like yep. 80 something shots and scored four goals for the whole tournament. So and that proved last night where they just could not yeah. convert. Mosovic was also, amazing in goals. Oh, and also, yeah. Actually, maybe you she could play for your men's Chelsea team stats. Yeah, she, 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 she should. She's in the women's. Get her she in the men's. Awesome. Get Lauren James and Mosovic in the men's team, I reckon. Yeah, you actually might score and save goals at the same time. <laughs> um, yeah, but I just think the way that Australia just cut through Canada, who have obviously proven to be a very good team, given the fact that they'd given America a beating on the way through to winning uh, the Olympics as well, just that the way everything's panned out for Australia is like, okay, this is the chance to put a big win in and then – Maybe against France next week is when we go, oh, this is a bit of a stress. But also, Australia's record in the round of 16 isn't great. We've only got past it once. We've only got past knockouts in one of our last yeah. five. Got a better team now, though. Yeah. And it's a home thing. So, you know, home hopefully, the, you know, the, the bit of the home, the home push gets us through. So, uh, Australia in over two and a half from yeah, our. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon this could be a 3 1. Nice. Well, that was right. the uh, 3 1 was the score last time we played. Fun fact. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to go against you, Alex, in this one with the over-under, which is what I'm going to talk this, about here. This could yeah, be... Like a sandwich bet. It could, but then <laughs> we could have... We lose and then no one gets a sandwich. That'd be sad. <laughs> That's but true. If you lose, then you buy me a sandwich. No, <laughs> you still owe me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you still That's guy Jim a sandwich. <laughs> All right. I'm going to yeah look at the same game as today, Denmark, in the round of 16. Matilda's, other than that hiccup against Nigeria, have been in amazing form. Won 11 of the last 13 games. That includes wins over France. France, England, Spain, and Sweden, who are known as some of the best teams in the world, and Canada uh, just last week, obviously, who looked horrible, but they are still up there in the rankings. Uh, and Denmark, I think they had an easy group stage. They did get uh, two wins, but it was yeah, a bit of an easy group compared to our one. As I just mentioned as well, uh, Denmark did lose to Australia last time 3-1. That was only at the end of last year, so it should be pretty similar teams. But uh, I, I don't mind the under in this one, the under two and a half. I think in a lot of knockout games, just in any tournaments uh, in soccer, men's or women's, it seems to be a bit closer, as that game suggested last night. 
Uh, it was really close. I know USA probably should have scored, but defenders defenses sort of tighten up in these uh, knockout sort of games. And eight of the last nine Denmark games have gone under that two and a half. They might not be uh, the best attack going around, but they are a strong defense. So I don't mind Australia to win and under two and a half goals at three dollars forty. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to side more with Stats Guy on this one. I feel like it's just going to be tight and. Uh... I think we'll see that sort of very, as I mentioned, like either it's one zip in extra time or two zip or something. Yeah. I just don't feel confident about like putting on the three goals on Denmark, uh, which is what obviously Alex needs. But of course, they could also score plenty too. Yeah, so. that happens. Tricky one. Interesting. It's set up to be absolutely amazing tonight. Cannot wait. Yeah. Uh, either way, best bets for today. It's Sorry. best bets. It's best bets. It's time for all the best bets. <laughs> Love it. I can't wait to start my career as a lounge singer. Either way, best bet for today, tomorrow, whenever. Now, I mentioned this one. I have a, uh, a drop on NBA Australia where it's just Stephen A. Smith screaming, Cleveland. And it is always probably, it doesn't matter if it's NFL or NBA, it's always apt. If you're talking about Cleveland, it's like, Cleveland. Yes, 100% of the time, you can just go, Cleveland. And it works. The Cleveland Browns, uh, I talked about the hype train at the top of the show. Uh, it's also weird to watching Alex uh, with his weird sexual predator mustache at the moment, <laughs> like just sort of like fading off into the distance. It's very. Oh, I was going to say, it looks like Cleveland Brown mustache. He show, yeah, he's got the Cleveland Brown mustache. He's now on a list, so uh, <laughs> he's not allowed near primary school. So, <laughs> or a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. It's, it's a hangover line. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, the Cleveland Browns, they are the hype-ish kind of team. Folks are sort of jumping all over their total wins uh, heading into the season. The AFC North is absolutely stacked as well because I think uh, you gentlemen will have heard me bang on about the Cincinnati Bengals pretty pretty much all preseason. Yep. Uh, that's also where the Baltimore Ravens are. And, of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers, who all they do is win, 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 no matter what. Mike Tomlin uh, has never had a losing record in a season as a coach. Wow. He's been coaching for a long time. So uh, it's a really stacked, weird division. And it's one of those ones where you go, over-unders get pretty tricky because they're all going to be beating up on each other as well, right? So you play uh, your division rivals twice each season. And so you have those six games where you're playing pretty decent competition, no matter what your strength of schedule is, right? And that's sort of what's built into your strength of schedule. Cleveland this year, because they sort of stunk it up towards the end of last year, uh, Deshaun Watson came back. They just weren't very good. Deshaun Watson, obviously, a year and a half off playing NFL football because he decided rubbing tugs allegedly might be a good idea. Oh. The lady was just like, oh, I don't know about this. And, Gerald uh, has just lost his mind uh, in the background. It's a turn of phrase. It's fun. Uh, all the allegations about that obviously meant he, uh, you know, copped the sort of commissioners, nah, you're not going to play for a bit. Came back and he stunk it up. So you see that fairly often when a QB comes back. They just the sort of warming back into the uh, speed of the NFL game is always a bit tricky. I feel like he'll be a little bit better this year. He has to be because he was really bad last year. They also have a really balanced team. The Browns, like they've got a pretty good defense. They've actually got some weapons on offense. They've got Amari Cooper, who's probably one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL. Uh, great running back in Nick Chubb. And they basically just have like the weapons to sort of grind down teams and sort of get to, uh, you know, get to wins here and there. And the fact that their win total is only eight and a half screams to me, mm. we're going over. But also on top of that, uh, alternate lines aren't out at the moment. They will probably be there in the next week or two. Uh, Actually, if you dig into some of the Bet365 stuff, I'm pretty sure you're about to find them. But eight and a half, I'd probably go to nine and a half. Uh, and you could even go, if you want, you go your exact wins. The nine is $5.80. So if you think the over eight and a half, mm. land exactly at nine, then I don't mind that. So I'd accept 10. But look, you could all also look at that nine and a half as an alternate line. But really, to make the playoffs, is $2.07 for the Cleveland Browns this year. It's sort of set up where you've got a weird AFC East, a weird AFC South that just stinks. And the AFC West, look, we don't know what's going to happen with the Raiders. We don't know what's going to happen with the Denver Nuggets, uh, Broncos. I'm just still in NBA form. Uh, but we know that KC will be really good. I feel like there's one or two teams extra in this AFC North that might just make the playoffs as well. It might have three teams, right? So if Cincinnati are as good as I expect, Baltimore I think will be really good. I think it's Cleveland who sneak in. Okay. So you can also, and this is one of those fun ones, the time of their elimination. 
oh. to lose in the wild card round because I think they can make it and then lose. $3.80 oh. is such a weirdly strange, awesome preseason, season-long bet where you're like, they're going to make the playoffs. It's only $2.07. <laughs> Are they then going to win that game? Probably not. Okay. That's $3.80 then, you little ripper. Off we go. And that's probably where I'm going to land. But that's basically my Cleveland breakdown. I think you just go the over, but it's only $1.65, which is the eight and a half. So that's why you can go the winning season as well. It's a dollar sixty. That's basically the same bet, um, but that sort of gives you just that sort of little bit of like, ah, oh, what happens if they get a tie? That does happen. Um, but the exact wins of nine, five dollars eighty. I kind of like that as well. But if you want to go the alternate line over nine and a half, let's go. But I think Cleveland hit the over of their total wins. It is a fascinating NFL season that I'm just. Look, He's itching to go. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be on site apparently. Just remember, we've got to set up that uh, team betting account so Jim can just go nuts for the next six months and I'm just like, just just, just give me the money at the end of the season. I don't care. <laughs> Bit of commission. All right. Alex, yeah. Alex, what's your best bets? Having a look at the Canberra – oh, no, sorry, the GWS Giants. <laughs> uh, shout out to them after all week talking nonstop rubbish to the Sydney Swans on social media. Got to remember to win the game, guys. Got to remember to win the game. Uh, backing them to miss the top eight. I think Ooh. that game on the weekend was crucial for either team. I think the winner basically was still a chance to make the top eight and the loser was bar- in a bit of Barney rubble. So right now after the weekend, you've currently got a bunch of teams that can make it, uh, given Western Bulldogs are sixth on 44 points and then you go all the way down to Essendon who are 12th on 40. So there is one game between Crazy. a whole host of teams. That's nuts. GWS, after losing that game to the Sydney Swans, it's an eight-point game because the Swans jumped up to 10th and they're now two points behind GWS on 42. GWS now have to travel to Adelaide to take on Port Adelaide this weekend, who would be hurting after that loss to Geelong over the weekend. And then take on Essendon, who, well... Oh, man, I was cheering hard for West Coast late. But it's Essendon and who knows what Essendon can do. And then in the final game of the season, they have to go to Marvel Stadium to take on Carlton. It is very easy to see GWS losing all three of those games and probably at best winning two. Winning two will probably get them into the eight because that's 13 wins. I see them only winning one of their max, which will have them at a 12 and 11 record. And with Geelong, Sydney, Essendon, even St Kilda there, all looking like they're probably going to win the next few games. It's like, oh, GWS may be the unlucky team to get squeezed out. They're currently $2 to miss out. I just think the steam may have just slowed down a little bit because, as we said in the AFL show, GWS were clearly a better team than the Sydney Swans heading into the last weekend, and they got comprehensively outplayed yep. and beaten. So I think GWS will just miss out this season. Port Essendon and Carlton as a run home is pretty tough. It is tough. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the Swan, uh, but then you have a look. Like the Swans' run home is Gold Coast this weekend, which they should win. Adelaide fifty fifty game and Melbourne, and I think Geelong's is Collingwood, the Western Bulldogs, and I'm not sure what the one in between is. I'll get that up right now. Uh, St Kilda. So it's like Ooh, there are bit harder, yeah. so many eight point games in the next like in the next three weeks. It is this last month is going to be absolutely hectic. Yeah, talk about like. Pre-elimination, elimination games. That Carlton GWS one at the in round twenty-four is just like I. That's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> well, then you've got we've well, also got Western Bulldogs taking on Geelong that week. Uh, St Kilda in the final round uh, have got the Brisbane Lions, so oh. that could stuff them up as well. It's just is chaos. It Brisbane Lions? So no, so, yeah, they've got the Brisbane Lions. Yeah, that's it. It's just absolutely set up for it. Just keep winning. <laughs> <laughs> just try your best. Yeah. <laughs> If Carlton can uh, somehow just pull one out against Melbourne, I'd be I'd pretty happy this week. I'm just saying. Yes. Carlton should not miss from here, given the fact, given that they're on 11 wins. One more win would basically just sort of tick it off. But you never know. It's Carlton. Yeah, yeah. Oh, any of these? Te- I wouldn't be surprised if any of the teams from last season, right? <laughs> yeah, any any of the teams from fifth to twelfth. I would not be shocked if any of them lost their final three, just because it's like, oh yeah, that's how this season's gone. Like, can I was about to say, can Port Adelaide miss the top four? Probably, but probably not at the same time. <laughs> yeah, they're a few ahead. I think it's a bit tough. But yeah. uh, there you go. All right. Stats guy. Alex did mention uh, just before we go on to my tip about I was cheering on West Coast hard. I thought North. I thought we had the number one pick, Harley Reid, for, for a few minutes there. But <laughs> it happened, but that's all good. Uh, having a look at some uh, EPL futures, as Alex mentioned, we're going to do a big uh, season breakdown of the new year season coming up next week, uh, this weekend, actually. Uh, I'm going to have a look at Crystal Palace's top scorer. 
Uh, I think we mentioned, I don't know if it was on the podcast, but Alex and I were talking. Their best player probably of the last five years, uh, Wilfred Zaha, is uh, gone. He's not at the club anymore. Uh, he did finish second in Crystal Palace's goals last season, and he did finish uh, first, I think, at least two or three times across his career as their leading goalscorer. He's now gone. I'm going to have a look at uh, one of their mid- attacking midfielders that also played a bit of striker in Eberetje Eze. He led the goals for them last season with 10, which doesn't sound like a lot, but they just didn't score as many goals as uh, some of your bigger teams. Uh, and he didn't even start at the, I didn't the starting lineup a fair chunk of the, the games at the start of the season. So I think he's going to start in that striker position or the camp position, going to have a lot more shots uh, in this season. He's got extreme pace, also has the power to shoot from long range. He was playing in that midfield role and just got a few long range goals. He ended the season really strongly, I think, in the last... 10 weeks or so, he got five of those 10 goals. Just a really strong player for Crystal Palace. They don't have as many strikers. You've got Odson Edouard, who came off the bench a lot. I think that's sort of his role in that team. He might come off the bench a lot. Eze is going to move into that starting lineup. And $2.25, I do really like for him to be Crystal Palace's top scorer. Just, yeah, if they're going to go to anyone in attack, he looked their strongest player. Led the goals last season. He's going to get more than 10, I think, because he'll have more chances without Zaha. So get on Eze. Nice one. I like that a lot. Good stuff. Crystal Palace digging in deep there, Stats Guy. Yeah, why not? <laughs> nice. Have you bought your Aston Villa shirt yet, Jim? <laughs> no. Not yet, but I will. I'll get full kit. It'll be gnarly. Socks. Uh, I was about to say, Stats Guy's just broken down Crystal Palace and, and I've got to do them in the show tomorrow. So oh, I'm just I just, gonna... Yeah, you can use that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. you Actually, you can do Crystal Palace. I'll take Burnley. Oh, I'm uh, happy also, <laughs> most importantly, remember that uh, Morocco was a French colony. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. there you go. There you go. Protectorate, at least. Uh, but there you go. Nailed it. <laughs> See? Smarter than the average bear. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. This is it. Done. Go bed daily for today. We're done. Uh, we're we'll back on deck tomorrow. We've got the Matildas tonight. It's going to be awesome. Can't, Can't wait. wait. Yeah, yeah. Right around the show. Subscribe on your podcast app. Uh, like, review, and star them all. And check us a follow for Code Bet across all the socials. What is it? Facey, IG, X, TikTok, Twitch, Threads. YouTube, all the good stuff. Uh, the YouTube stuff is always very fun because it's just our smiling faces yelling at each other. Uh, send in any questions about the socials. We'll rate your multis. We'll rate your bets, whatever you need us to do. Uh, but that's it, I think. Good weekend. Uh, I took the squid to the USA Sweden game last night. Yep. Uh, packed in at the end of regulation. Made a Nothing happened after that. Anyway. <laughs> nice. Absolutely timed it out to perfection, but it was awesome. He had a great time again. Awesome. The Women's World Cup is just an absolute... Oh, Festival. It is so much fun. Uh, but either way, and of course, I did uh, text the group, I think, halfway through Carlton's game yesterday, turned off the TV, and it was because of me that they won. Because you turned uh, it they off. Turned- yeah. <laughs> that, actually, that actually put me to sleep on the couch. I was uh, just sitting on the couch, just trying to relax after the flight, and I literally fell asleep. <laughs> I was... Uh, it was pretty... F- I actually went and rewatched it, and there's the... I remember the exact point when I turned, turned it, it off. off. <laughs> It was like Max King kicked the goal. They went up like 22 or whatever it was. I'm like, nah, that's it. Back up, boys. We're done. Uh, 11 yeah, minutes won. or so in the third quarter. I'm like, nah, not going to look. Went out and kicked the footy with the squid. Came back. I'm right back in it. I'm like, still not turning it on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And uh, rode our way to our win. We did listen to the end of it in the radio, on the radio on the way to uh, the soccer. But <laughs> either way, good times. It was awesome. Thank you, Stats Guy. Thank you. Welcome back, Alex. Yeah, cheers. And thanks to me, of course, for, uh, I don't know, doing this. And thanks to Gerald for doing all the production. That was a great job, just Gerald. Uh, what do we say, Stats Guy? Gamble responsibly. All right, may all your picks come in. Happy bunting. We'll catch you tomorrow. This is Cobet Daily. Out. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.